Welcome to our closing chapel. We'll begin by singing, I Know That My Redeemer Lives, verses 1 and 8. I know that my Redeemer lives. What comfort this sweet sentence gives. He lives, he lives, who once was dead. He lives, my joy this sentence gives. I know that my Redeemer lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thoughts, words, and actions. We have not loved you and others. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. And as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Worthy is Christ the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Power, riches, wisdom, and strength, and honor, blessing, and glory are His. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. 
sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation. Blessing, honor, glory, and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. slain has begun his reign. Alleluia. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Let me read to you our theme verses again from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And let's sing together our theme song for the, uh, for the year. Let us sing for joy. And remember, did you hear the news? Jesus loves you so. Let us sing for joy. And then Jesus died for you to take your sins away. And then Jesus came alive just like he said he would. And then the last verse is, Someday we will live in heaven with our friend. Did you hear the news? Did you hear the news? Jesus loves you so. Jesus loves you so. Jesus loves you so. Did you hear the news? Jesus loves you so. Let us sing for joy. Jesus died for you. Jesus died for you to take your sins away. To take your sins away. To take your sins away. Jesus died for you to take your sins away. Let us sing for joy. Jesus came alive just like he said he would, just like he said he would, just like he said he would. Jesus came alive just like he said he would. Let us sing for joy. Someday we will live. Someday we will live in heaven with our friend. In heaven with our friend, in heaven with our friend. Someday we will live in heaven with our friend. Let us sing for joy. All right. I have a question for you. Was there joy at Bethlehem? this year. Well, I have in my box for today a couple joyfully moments that our teachers wanted to remind you all about. So let's see what's in my box for today. All right. The first joyful moment is Mrs. Cleland's enjoyment this year was incubating eggs and watching all the students egg sighted with our baby chicks. And uh, if you remember some of the names, like Black Beauty, Dragon, 
uno, dos, tres, rooster, hawkeye, hawket, stripes, brownie, and princess. Let's see here. Oh, got another one. This is from Mrs. Miskell. Our kickball and extra student named Bobby brought our middle school joy all year long. He and kickball was able to bring joy to all of our upper grade students. The pure excitement and happiness on everyone's faces when a run was scored or a great kick was made or when an epic out was made. Let's see here. Oh, here's something from your music teachers, Pastor and Mrs. Landon. Remember the rhythm sticks for you younger grades and remember our rest position. No touchy. And uh, remember uh, doing the taps, the scrapes, and the nails. And uh, I'll tell you, one of the joyful moments was when we broke into groups and one group was doing one rhythm while another group was doing a completely different rhythm. And you were very good at doing that. Okay. Ooh, here we go. This is from kindergarten. Uh, Mrs. Thatcher says that their joyful moment came when Mr. Crosby dropped Mentos, a solid, into Diet Coke, a liquid, and the resulting gas exploded high into the sky. Our faces were full of joy and delight to witness this fantastic chemical reaction. And what an awe-filled and joyful moment for kindergarten. OK, here's another we have from Miss Bledsoe in second grade. Miss Bledsoe has joy when she reads Giraffes Can't Dance to her class. And she reads it when her class was frustrated or happy or just tired of math. OK, then from third and fourth grade social studies and Ohio history, Mrs. Dawson would like to share this. So. Our classroom's favorite most happy moments for social studies and Ohio history in third and fourth grade. We're in asking, what is that? Or in questioning, who is who? Or wondering, where are we? Or where is it? We also questioned, when events happened. But we were most content when talking about the one who made us. Oh, and there's one more thing that she had here. She also liked to figure out how to get from here to there. Okay, this is from Mrs. Blackman. The joyful day for third and fourth grade was grandparents and Valentine's Day. It was a terrific to have so many grandparents and visitors in our classroom. We were bursting at the seams with all the love and care and joy that we celebrated that day. OK, we have from Mrs. Weaver. Because I work with so many students in the classrooms and in the Sigma room, I can't think of just one example. I would like to focus on everyone's smiles, pastors, principals, teachers, staffs, and students, all lightening up 
when we were together and a problem was solved or in confusion finally becoming understanding. I love you all from Mrs. Weaver. All right, from Mrs. S. She says, there are so many moments that I can think about that were full of joy. Whenever you students grasped the concept Mrs. S. was teaching, and then in turn, you assisted another student with the learning process. And that was pretty amazing. I was filled with joy by all the support, compassion, and kindness from all of the staff that I have never felt more welcomed. Individual joyful moments would be whenever I was given a handmade card, a letter, or drawing by a student telling me how much they loved art class. Oh, here's a good one, too. This is from Mrs. Burson. First grade's joyful moment has to be celebrating the 100th day of first grade. We counted each school day and anxiously awaited for that big day when we finally were in school for 100 days. Celebrating the number 100 with its own day and very own special activities was so much fun. From making our special 100-day glasses, building a structure with 100 red Solo cups, mixing together a 100-piece snack, and hearing a Bible story about 100 sheep. It was a day I hope that the first graders will always remember with joy. Mr. B. Mr. B is filled with joy, teaching and mentoring the students of Bethlehem. Mr. B shares the joy of history and social studies with our middle school kids. One day, before I was there to teach catechism, I could hear Dr. Martin Luther King's I Had a Dream speech in the stairway as I was entering Mr. B's room. Mr. B is also filled with joy for the support and the camaraderie from the dedicated staff members and from the educational and spiritual leadership, Pastor Witte, Mrs. Landon, and the Bethlehem Lutheran School Board of Education. Mr. Beaker from our band student, or from our band, he was filled with joy. At the beginning of the school year, one of the fourth graders said during band practice that they were gonna have to get the older people to help them to learn their instruments. And so Mr. Beaker asked, well, who are the older people? And the student replied, well, the fifth and sixth graders. And then Mr. Beaker asked, well, how old do you think I am? And she replied, 92. And by the way, Mr. Beaker is only 68. And then from Mrs. Johnson, our fifth grade class, Mrs. Johnson says, my joyful moments come usually every day in our morning devotions. I give the students a verse or two and they answer questions about the verse. I get to see how God speaks to them and how mature they are in their walk with Christ. Here's an example. The Bible verse is Hebrews chapter 12, verses 12 to 14. Therefore, strengthen your feeble arms and weak knees. Make level paths for your feet so that the lame may not be disabled but rather healed. Make every effort to live in peace with all men and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. And then she would ask questions like, is this scripture actually talking about your arms and knees? And of course, no, it's not. So what do you think this metaphor means? And here's what some of the students said. I think it's talking about our faith and how it is weak. But if we read God's word, it will strengthen our faith, and it makes the path a tiny bit easier. But still, being one of God's children is very hard. Another student said, I know we are all part of the body of Christ, and we need to take care of our part. We take care of our part by exercise and feeding it properly. 
we find that food and exercise. We eat by reading God's word. We exercise by talking about Jesus to others. Another student says, we're all part of the body of Christ, and like our physical bodies, we have weaknesses. For example, if you lose your eyesight and you are blind and your other senses compensate and appear to grow stronger. When an arm stumbles, maybe the foot compensates to help keep the body healthy. Keeping in mind, no part of the body is better than the rest. And then another student said, I think it means our spiritual arms and our spiritual needs. Yes, we have many things to rejoice about, and many, many things. Rejoice always. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And all these things have brought you and our teachers much joy. Now, has every school day and every school activity been joyful? I mean, how about the last two months while we've been stuck at home? Was it joyful when you saw all that homework that you had to do in that packet? Did your parents rejoice when you fussed or complained about that homework? And wasn't it sad when you heard that, well, we weren't going to be able to come back together for the rest of the year? We wouldn't get to worship here together in chapel or to play together at recess, at gym, or before care or after care. We miss each other lot. Well, the Apostle Paul, who was God's messenger to write 1 Thessalonians, had many times that weren't joyful either. Instead of being stuck at home, Paul sometimes was stuck in jail for doing absolutely nothing wrong. Paul had times where he had lost his job, and people said and did some very not nice things to Paul, all because he shared the good news of Jesus. Many times, Paul had to leave wherever he was staying so that he wouldn't get killed or arrested. Paul had a very, very hard life, even harder than what we've faced over these last two months. And yet he wrote, Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will in Christ Jesus for you. You see, Paul's joy didn't depend on where he was or on what kind of day he was having. Paul's joy was Jesus. Paul believed that Jesus had died for all of his sins. Paul believed that Jesus had risen from the dead. And Paul trusted that God would always be faithful to him because of Jesus. And Paul knew that Jesus was coming back on the last day to bring him and all believers to be with Jesus forever in heaven. No problem was too big because Jesus was Paul's Lord and Savior. And you have the same joy as Paul did because you have the same Jesus. Jesus is still going to be with you this summer. Jesus is still going to be your Savior during this whole coronavirus pandemic. Jesus is still your joy while your family follows those frustrating stay-at-home or stay-safe orders. For Jesus can still be your joy, even if you're not coming back here to Bethlehem next year. For Jesus is here. He's here in the Bible. Jesus is here in church. He's here in your baptism. And this is where Jesus fills your heart. He fills you with his joy, with lasting joy, even everlasting joy. My prayer is that you are always filled with that joy in Jesus, your Savior. Amen. All right. Let's speak together our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. 
he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for all the joys of this school year. Thank you for the joy of teaching, learning, playing, and worshiping together. Thank you especially for the joy of salvation, and send us out sharing your joy with others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for the gift of holy baptism. Thank you for being faithful to us according to your promises and help all who are baptized to be th faithful to you. And we also thank you for the gift that you have given to many of our students here. And we ask that you would be with them and fill them with joy as they celebrate their baptismal birthdays. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for all who helped us learn during the stay-at-home orders. Thank you for our teachers. Thank you for our parents, our grandparents, and anyone else who has helped us along the way. Jesus, help us to love and honor all who continue to help us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for Mrs. Miskell and for her service here at Bethlehem over the last two years. Fill her family with joy as they move to Iowa and serve you there. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And dear Jesus, thank you for watching over us during this pandemic. Be with us, be with our families, be with our community, our country, and all the world. Keep us safe and provide for all of our needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. And our closing hymn will be Go, My Children, With My Blessing. If you have that bright green sheet that was in your packet, you can use that. Go, My Children, With My Blessing. Go, my children, with my blessing, never alone. Waking, sleeping, I am with you. You are my own. In my love's baptismal, children with my blessing you are my own go my children sins forgiven at peace and pure here you learned how what I can cure. Here you heard my dear son's story. Here you touched him, saw his glory. 
Go, my children, sins forgiven, at peace and pure. I, the Lord, will bless and keep you and give you peace. I, the Lord, will smile upon you and give you peace. I, the Lord, will be your Father, Savior, Comforter, and brother, go, my children, I will keep you and give you peace. Have a joyful summer, and I look forward to seeing you again whenever that may be.